So when I work for something, as I make money, allocate your money towards the next goal that's bigger than what your vision currently is. You gotta understand that your current situation ain't your final destination. You gotta believe in yourself because the world don't believe in you. Ain't nobody gonna believe in you. Ain't nobody gonna have your back. Ain't nobody gonna work for you. You gotta put that work in. You gotta do it every day. So I'm gonna tell you this, don't be nice, be hungry, and don't be humble because the world wanna do that to you. It has to work or it has to work. Welcome to an episode of Circle of Greatness. This is gonna be a special one. Um, I had the opportunity to get all of my brothers on the pod. It is very hard to get all of them together for a podcast. And now we here. For anything. Yeah, yeah. What's up? Yeah, you had to beg us to get here. Nobody want to be here with you, Bucko. That's right. I, I see. <laughs> Bucko. Of course, we started late. Yep. Yeah, and we started, started late. He just... Y'all ate good, though. He, we did. Y'all he y'all ate. Good. He got some food. No, no. Y'all, y'all were late. I knew I you were coming late. late. No. I wasn't late. late. No, he I said was I was, was going to be late, though. I'll, is it safe to say Alex is always on time? No. No. Yeah, I am. No. 90% of the time. Alex is on part on time for the part he wants to be on time for. Yeah. Always on time. Jason I didn't know. They said Jason and Marcus confirmed 4.30, so I thought I was. I said. We both was late. I can't get there at 4.30 because I know nobody's going to be got there at 4.30. You got here at 5.30. That's why you still say So I said, I, because I was shooting some stuff today, so I was like, I can't say 4.30 and I get there and y'all show up at 5.30. So I said, I'm going to come at 5.30. I told you that earlier. Yeah. And I got here at 5.30 and. I'm showing up an hour late every time y'all give a time. No. Yo, y'all, y'all think we, we should introduce ourselves? Like for those who, they definitely don't know you yet. I'm Jason wow. Lobdell, Mr. Two Weeks Out on Instagram. Yeah. Where, did, where did the two weeks come from? What, what's that? I always want, I've been best friends with you for 22 years. I still don't know where the hell that name came it's from. It's bodybuilding terminology. Long story short, Halani went to a, uh, Halani was doing bodybuilding and she went to a um, seminar and the head judge was, was a guy interrupting the head judge and he was like, hey, you stand up. The guy stood up. He was like, take your shirt off. Took his shirt off. And he looked at me. He was like, now you stand up. I was like, I'm not here. I'm, I'm just here with her. But I was in shape. <laughs> and um, I stood up. I was like, what's up? He was like, take your shirt off. Took my shirt off. And he was like, see, this guy, like, he two weeks out. You like shit, you know? <laughs> and I was like, hmm, Mr. Two Weeks Out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I kept saying, before I got on Instagram, I was just like, oh, yeah. They say, I'm like, I'm two weeks out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, I'm showtime. I'm show ready. So yeah, that's, that's where that come from. Like, I'm two weeks out from stepping on stage. Yeah. Guarantee nobody knew that. Right. That's, that's a, a fact. fact. And God. then you had your wife become Miss Two Weeks Out. Yeah, because yeah. I got popping on the gram. And yeah. shit. <laughs> so this name yeah. came from a nigga telling you to take your shirt off. <laughs> okay. Cool. My name is Him 500. Um... I, Teddy bear. Ain't no nigga tell me to take my shirt off for the 500. <laughs> uh, it, it was for Fortune 500. <laughs> <laughs> him 500. Fortune 500. Him. Uh, it's just, I'm him. I wish it was something. I'm him. <laughs> I'm him. Uh, Justin, new ACO. I think I just been running with that since the beginning. I was just like, yo, it's just a new age of entrepreneur. So I just been running with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. New age. Um, that was good energy, you know. Um, <laughs> Real quick story, I was doing interviews for drivers and I interviewed about 15 drivers and uh, we needed drivers desperately. This is about five years ago. And uh, after 15 interviews, I didn't hire any of them. And I went back to my team and I was like, look, we don't have no drivers. And he was like, wow, I was like, all oh, the energy was bad. Mm. Like they had qualifications, you know what I'm saying? They look real good on paper, um, but I just didn't like the energy and I seen that it was gonna be a problem. You know what I'm saying? So I decided to name it uh, Good Energy Worldwide because I definitely wanted to you know, take, do business worldwide, you know what I mean? And I manifested it and now I own the name, just did the trademark, got the trademark back. Yeah, so, yeah oh, shout out to the biz lawyer on that yeah. too. Yeah. Sure. Yo, how do, so you got a new gym, dog. Tell us how the new new gym popping, bro. We was just there the other night for some mental health stuff. That was like, no facts. bro, I was there and was it's like, <clears throat> I didn't know the amount of things that people are going through. Like three men back to back, I was molested, I was molested, I was molested. Mm -hmm. We'll talk later, Alex talked about seeing his dad for the first time in Mm -hmm. 39 years. So it was like, there's some deep crap going on. Talk about the gym. (laughs) (laughs) Keep that, keep that. (laughs) Yo, that mosquito will get on my nerves. Don't delete that one. Yo, you see the I'm gonna say this though, just like that room, right? I'm gonna give you an example of absent fathers, right? Yeah. Everybody on the couch is a, a, a great father, right? Mm-hmm. But just look at the four of us <laughs> Yo, sorry. right by each other, right? Keep that too. Another mic for this mosquito. Father in prison for murder. Mm-hmm. Father in prison. Yep. Father died in prison. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Just met his father 
a week ago. Yeah. Absent. You know what I'm saying? One way or other. Jail, mm -hmm. death, or just absent. You yeah. know what I mean? So no matter how So it's safe to say that's five. So is it almost good to say five four out of every five African Americans are fatherless or don't have their father in their life? I don't know the statistics, mm -hmm. but four out of five of my homeboys. Yeah. And yeah. where I'm from, it's like that. You know what I'm saying? Um yeah, dang. but yeah, that's, that's realistic. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, so us having the rats on having the dad, your old life, brother. Thank you, bro. I'm sure. <laughs> it, it, it's almost like a a, a a badge of dishonor. Like, you got a dad. <laughs> you know, I, th I think. think no, I right. think. Right. I think what it shows. No, I think what it shows is that it's possible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think it shows yeah. it's possible because. You know, guess what? You ask all of our kids, and they all gonna say, "No, my dad is in our life." Yeah. But Neo, Neo's kids call him Neo. For real? They call you Neo? Sometimes they just be playing. <laughs> oh no, <nah. Dad, laughs> Neo. There's no way in the world. Neo. Back in the day, Neo. I'd have got slapped up. Oh yeah, that's funny. Yeah, but you know one thing? I, I I think I said I said it to uh to Jason like when you know even like you know you had the conversation with your dad. Shout out to you for putting that. You know. Yeah. Being a friend to help you put a you lot know, of put good together. together, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. Jason does a lot of that stuff. A lot of people don't know that he's real thoughtful. You know what I'm saying? He <laughs> on the outside, he real hard, but he's real, real thoughtful. But it's like first thing I said, I was like, man, we need more of that, but we need less of that. Mm. We need more of like, yo, we got to fix the problems, we got to fix the solution. But at the same time, we need less of it because less problems. We gotta, we gotta that that will solve more problems than most of the stuff we talking about because a lot of people we run across they have trauma from childhood, and then we pass it on, and then. Now we're trying to go make money and we make money out of trauma. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like we trying to make money off of how we felt when we was a kid and that just creates a whole nother animal. Now our kids feel a certain way and we just keep the, the little cycle going. So yeah, we need, we got to fix stuff. We got to forgive. But then, I, but I think it starts with us holding our brothers accountable. I'm like, yo, like I know people that got kids and I'm like, yo, you need to be in your child life. Like I don't even mess with people if- You tell them that? Yes, bro. Yeah. I can, you can, for me, that's a big thing. Like, even though my dad was in my life, if you don't take care of your kids, yeah, that's a character flaw. Side you, eye. you know, we the thing is, is that having this conversation respectfully is that you talk about mental health, and for some reason that in our community we think mental health mean like somebody crazy or you got an issue, and you don't realize that mental health isn't getting help. It's empowering your superpower. Like the strongest thing we got, we always talk about is mindset. But how do how is mental health looked at and frowned upon in our community? It's been frowned upon. But meanwhile, other communities have empowered mental health and it's actually becoming their superpower. We don't realize that our mental is the strongest thing that we have is our mind. Mm -hmm. But we don't work our mind out. When we say mental health, it's like, oh, yeah, you want to come in. We got to talk about trauma. Mental health is not talking about trauma or identifying traumas is learning how to properly enhance your mind and the things in a way that you think and really kind of grow mentally. And like, like y'all in the gym, like physical, when you talk about health, like it's for your mind, like working that muscle yeah. and learning how to use it properly. And a lot of us don't know how to think. Yeah. And we look at our community and why we losing. We ain't losing cause we're, we're, we're dumb. We losing cause the thing that we value, that we should value the most, we look at if we get help with it, something wrong with us. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree right. with that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yo, you're so crazy. I didn't even know, like, like depression, that's a real thing. I didn't know that. Like, my homie be depressed. I'm like, bro, what's, like, you can't just shake it. I'm like, yo, that's a real thing. Yeah, and then is. when I was in that room with all oh, no men, we are, we are facing a battle that somebody doesn't know. Yeah. But when I heard all of that stuff, yes, at the event, I'm like, what made you want to put, put on that event? I guess dealing, being a personal trainer, I hear, like, I'm damn near a counselor. Yeah, it's a lot of times like it's the bar. girls. Yeah, a lot of times the girls they come in there and they vent and things of that nature. And you just like, damn, you just learn so much about these ladies, you know. And every now and then I train guys, and it's just like they come in there like scrappy, you know what I'm saying? He comes in there and you know you could tell he just so focused on his workout whole time. He going through a divorce. He's on shade room every day. You know what I mean? He's just like mentally trying to block that out, but he's going through stuff yeah. and I could see it. You get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. we wanted to create a safe space, right? The first time we did it, we called it a safe space because we wanted guys to be able to say anything they wanted to, right? And we wanted, you know, we're so pro-black and all that. I wanted white boys. I wanted black boys. I want gay guys. I want straight guys. I want everybody in there to be able to talk their piece, right? Mm -hmm. And as you saw, thugs, people with teardrops in their face and tats everywhere. They just like, yeah, I was molested. And then after one said it, what happened? Everybody Open up the door for somebody else to say it. I was molested. I was molested. I was like, damn. Yeah. You know, Crazy. and it was so many people that couldn't even get to the microphone. But like, like, like my boy said, he was like, man, that's the first time I've said it out loud. 
it felt good getting that out, just getting it out. You know what wow. I mean? Mm. And a lot of people, you know, things that happen to you, it kind of trickle into other things. Like he said, man, I had to prove that I wasn't gay so bad. I'm I'm around here smashing everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like hypersexual hypersexuality. Hypersexual, I said it right. Yeah, you said it. Yeah, hypersexuality. But so he was on this rampage of smashing chicks because he felt like he got his I'm, manhood. Yeah, he got his manhood. So he feeling like he got to mm. be extra masculine. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's a lot of guys out here acting super masculine and tough and so violent. Mm -hmm. Where that's coming from? Yeah, mm -hmm. shit coming from when they was six years old, eight years old. Wow. It's in them. You know what I mean? Mm. But it's a way to reverse that What's through that? counseling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Through talking, through safe mm -hmm. spaces, through getting around other people that look like you and actually saying it out loud and hearing somebody say it. So many people was like, bro, I needed this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, man, I'm going through three of the things some boys talk about, but I know I ain't alone. When's the yeah. next one? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That's, That's good. Good. And you share, Alex, you share just about your fatherhood story. Mm -hmm. I know you shared it a little bit online. You want to share? How, how was that moment? That was the first time I heard... You said you haven't been with your father your entire life, first time seeing him. Yeah. But you you also mentioned, I didn't hear that part, that he was on drugs along a huge Amar that time. Yeah. So what's that story? You know, to not make it drawn out, um, Jason brought up a real good point about, I think I think a lot of people thought I was FaceTiming my, my father or like, you know, I might've talked to him a couple of times. I had never had one conversation with my father before. Mm. Um, didn't know what he looked like, none of that. You know what I'm saying? So this was a surreal moment. And again, thank you to Jason. You know, he a real friend. He, I've been procrastinating on, on doing that for a minute. You know what I'm saying? And he just took the initiative to like, yo, I'm gonna get in contact with his his cousin on his father's side. And they mm -hmm. behind the scenes, behind my back, put the whole play together. You know what I'm saying? Wow. He just gave me a date. Like, yo, show up in Miami on this date. Yeah. And I needed that. You know what I'm saying? Um, just, you know, all this time, I just been a lot of resentment. Um, we talk about grinding from trauma. I was literally last 10 years, like now nah, I'm about to, I'm about to really pop off because he gonna hear about me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make sure I'm a household name. So, you know what I mean? I want him to feel bad that he wasn't in my life. So I'm gonna be super successful yeah. and I'm gonna spoil my mother. I'm gonna retire her, give, make sure she live her best life and he gonna regret it. And that was my feeling yeah. the last five years. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. But um, ironically, yo, I, I go down to Miami, I meet him. <laughs> I walked up to him and as soon as I walked up to him, I seen the tears in his eyes. Mm. And that and that just took away all my my defense. It was weird. Like yeah. as soon as I seen the genuineness in his eyes, I could just see like, damn, he needed it too. Yeah. Mm. And um, I shook his hand. I'm looking at this man, the first person I ever you didn't hug him. Like you shook him. his hand. You didn't yeah, hug I him. shook his hand. I hugged him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at this man. This is the first time I ever see somebody that I will admit look like I look like this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, oh, Fact, boy, this is like my nose problem. Like that's yeah. crazy. You know what I'm saying? And um. Yo, you know, I asked all the tough questions. My biggest question was like, yo, how you, like, did you hear about me? Like, because again, I'm, I'm grinding them. Yeah, I'm trying like, to make sure did it he, work? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, yo, Alex, he was like, yo, I'm gonna be real with you. I, I seen your interviews. I, um, I've been on your page before. He was like, man, I've been wanting to tell you something. He was like, man, I'm proud of you. Damn. Mm -hmm. And I've been waiting to hear that. Mm -hmm. That was it. Mm -hmm. Everything just released. Mm -hmm. You said it felt like uh, 20 Ooh. pounds lifted up off you. <clears throat> but um, as he, get into, he got into the story, just again, not to make it drawn out, he was like, yo, I was on drugs. I was on cocaine. He was like, well, after I met your mother, a little bit after that, I got caught up in New York and I was on coke. And he was like, I got, I got locked up like a bunch of times. I was in jail, like I think he said like six to eight years or something, he, he been locked up. And he was just like, you know, um, there was times where he wanted to reach out to me, but he was... He was scared to face the consequences. He was, he felt like I would he wouldn't be good enough for me. Mm. And it's ironic because the, what I was trying to do was become this super mega entrepreneur. And the whole time that was making him intimidated. Mm. And it was delaying mm. him from reaching out to me. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? But I'm gonna say this. When I got home finally and I really got a chance to unpack it, I was like, yo, God is is really funny, yo, because I feel like he made sure that I didn't meet him because I don't know if me being exposed to that drug lifestyle that he was in, like it might've messed me up. It might've, I might not be where I'm at today if I had, if I was exposed to, you know what I'm saying? Whatever he had going on. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yo God, maybe he mm -hmm. prevented me or delayed me from meeting him until he got his stuff together. So now he, 
you know he working. You met the best version of him. I mm -hmm. met the best version. Of him. He got his he got his hair cut. He looked good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was like, yo, I'm, I got my own house. I got a girl. I'm taking care of my, my kids. My, you know the ones that I got now. And I'm like, damn. So he he, he doing good. So yeah. I'm like, damn. Maybe I wasn't meant to meet him. Like maybe my yeah. journey would have been different. So mm -hmm. just with all that, I, I don't I don't have no ill feelings, man. And I just felt 20 pounds lighter now that I met my dad. So when we was at the mental health spot, I was just like, yo, I was telling the dudes like, um. I felt like me not having him was causing commitment issues for me. Um, 39, no kids. Mm. I was scared to have a kid out of wedlock because I'm like, I got to break this cycle. Like, mm. I can't continue that. Yeah, but, that's, that's good. the reason why I don't got no kids. I've been careful because of that. Mm. But um, So you would have... No, no, I'm good. Keep good. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you know. Nah, real right. talk. So like, in closing, I told the, the dudes at the gym, the mental health spot, I was like, yo... Um, there's somebody in here right now that's not, not taking care of their kids or not in their kid's life and you letting the baby mother stop you. And I'm like, yo, you, you got to fix that because mm -hmm. that kid is going through something right now because mm -hmm. of you not being there. Yeah. It don't matter how successful <clears throat> I was. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter. I'm, I'm not depressed. Yeah. But it had effects on me that I didn't even realize until I really started <clears throat> unpacking it for yeah. real, for real. And I started facing it head on. So if you watching this, yo, like for real, like you watching this video, um, Yo, today, tomorrow, soon, make sure that you get your kid's life. Um, put the pride aside, put the ego aside. You got to go to court. Go ahead and do your business. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we need our fathers out here. Um, and if you ain't met your father, I need you to uh, put your pride aside as well, like I did. Because, again, it, it might not even be for him. It's for you. It helped me. Like, I feel complete finally now. The healing mm -hmm. process starts now, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, that's, I, nah, you know, I got a question. I got a question for you. I want to piggyback off that real quick. Though, well, get cause... off the piggyback when I <laughs> <laughs> no, but before before yeah. you go, because because what you were saying, what made you as a friend? Because like some of us may not be in that situation where it's like we going through it. But what made you as a friend say, "All right, my boy ain't met his dad, mm -hmm. but let me. This is important. Let me jump in there and do that." Because maybe some of us might need to do that for somebody that's that's around us. Yeah. Mm, that's good. I think it was like some of the things he was saying, like some of the issues he might have, you know, I always be like, some of the issues we, me and him discuss, you know what I mean? And I just kind of, he said it more than once. He said it damn near on accident. He said it, you know what I mean? Just when we talking about relationship stuff and things of that nature, I'm just like, damn, he probably need to sit down and sit with his dad. You know, people be having abandonment issues and things of that nature, you know, and that's why he say, you know, I don't want to have a kid until I'm married, because I'm not trying to abandon them, mm. you know what I mean? So I just kind of was like putting, processing everything he was saying. Yeah. And then it was finally like, oh, what happened was he did the podcast. Mm. He did um, Vanessa's Vanessa yeah. podcast. Mm. And he was like, man, my uncle liked the comment and I didn't even know he was following me on Instagram. That's all he said. My uncle on his side. His oh, daddy's wow. brother. You know what I'm saying? He met him on Facebook years ago or whatever, but he, he knew once somebody connected. So basically I just went to the guy page and I started looking through his, what you call it, and I saw he had a daughter, lived in Atlanta, and that. so I just was like, yo, and she was following us. Mm, wow. Mm, so I'm like, yo, <laughs> jump on the phone real quick. Yeah. She jumped on the phone like, hey, Mr. Two Weeks Out. She probably thought I wanted to train. Mm. <laughs> I was like, yeah, here's the thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh -uh. And you know, we plugged it like that, but it was just like, I know him. He ain't gonna do it. Mm -hmm. Certain things he ain't gonna do. Yeah. I had like a long story, it's a long, it's an old story, but when he got when he was in the hospital one time mm -hmm. and the doctor I listened to the doctor was giving him all these orders and stuff like that and like nigga if you don't take it when you're gonna be stabbed. in trouble i talked about that oh yeah so right. he got stabbed and you know he was in a, his punctured his lungs punctured lung, yeah. yeah he was like bad and i was just like i know this nigga i gotta call his mom yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah mm -hmm. and i had to tell on him you know what i mean but mm -hmm. i just know my, my my guy and i just know certain shit he not gonna do you know? yeah so it was just it wasn't nothing more than that i knew like, he was never gonna do it and i was just like man damn, i'm tired of talking about this shit Let's do it. <laughs> but you, know you know can see it was bothering him yeah absolutely yeah. that's my man we absolutely. talk and we talk and um we talk about relationships and i would hear him kind of reference it but one thing that kind of like when he did it and i sat back because i seen my man's no offense, but I see my man cry out for his father on the podcast. Mm -hmm. He made it, he he gave him the okay on the public platform. Like, I ain't tripping. Yeah. And I seen it and I was like, 
it's 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 bothering them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's sitting heavier. You know, as we grow older, we more mature, things start to sit heavy. So I seen it like just knowing him, like for him to Alex don't speak out of turn. Yeah. Like if anybody think about what they say and when they saying something, it's him. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, I seen him give the okay. And I was like, when we would have conversations about kids and I got a room upstairs for my kid and be like, that that room ain't never gonna be filled till this boy get filled. So mm-hmm. is seeing it is is dope, bro. Like I'm just happy for you because I seen how you how it was when you came back when we talked, how often you reference it and just how yeah. it make you feel. So like, yeah. texting like, me now, it's weird getting text messages from my father. <laughs> Tell me what you did yeah. when, you, when you saw you huh? <laughs> first. What you do with your phone? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, this is my father's text. Yeah. Yeah. This what, is crazy. I'm gonna say one more thing. I'm gonna leave it alone. But <laughs> yeah. I told Alex right on the way there. On the way there, I'm telling Alex, like, bro, I did my DNA test. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I did the um, genetics, whatever, the yeah. DNA in uh, Ancestry.com. Ancestry, yep. And I was reading on genetics and I was reading on, the, you know, the, how powerful the DNA is and stuff like that. I was like, bro, they say, you know what I mean? You might walk like this person, talk like this person. You might got his mannerisms and don't know it. That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? That's how strong the DNA is. Man, let me tell you something. <laughs> I was recording them so much. I got 22 <laughs> clips of everything Alex do. And I'm like, he never even met. These niggas never met. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to run the picture. Run and the picture do, right now. Look, they doing the same thing. You know how Alex be pulling the shirt down like this? Yeah. <laughs> Bruh, his dad did the same thing. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And when they walked up and, and dap each other, right? Alex be doing like this little walk. <laughs> he do like this walk. Like, like a duck. Said, if you look at all the time when yeah. we had the conferences and people be talking to him, yeah. he, he'd be doing this. Yeah. Man, he dapped his father and they was talking. And then when they looked off, they both was like, <laughs> "That's crazy." <laughs> Bobble hands and shit. I'm like, "Damn!" And, and the apparently manner. they both cried too because he started crying. Yeah. Like, same, yeah. same bro. I'm walking behind him when they walk in. The bro, show, I'm, I'm I'm just documenting everything because me and him been having these conversations so long. So I'm just like, click click click. I'm paparazzi. Like, so yeah. I can show him later on when we leave. Like, mm-hmm. man, look at this. I just yeah. sent him a picture that I found yesterday, scary. day before yesterday of them. Like, Standing next to each other. Them niggas got the same exact yeah. knock knee, st- like <laughs> exactly. Crazy. Bro. What? What did? Crazy. You, how did you decide what you was gonna ask though? Because I like that's what I would be thinking. Like, I ain't talked to somebody my whole life. Like, what's the first question I'm gonna ask? Man, what, I what ain't got I, a plan, bro. I just sat there and it just came to me. You know what I'm saying? I want to know um, how he met my mother. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I want to know his medical history. Yeah, that's you know a good saying? question. I, need, I needed to know his medical history for sure. Uh, something I need to look out for, you know what I'm saying? Um, mm, that's smart. Yeah, I asked him, did he did he hear about me before this meeting? Or did yeah. he see me, you know? Um, mm. And just why? Like, why? You know, I was like, yo, every Father's Day, when Father's Day come around, you don't think about me, my boy? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, and, and, and not no other day. Yeah. <laughs> well, Father's Day, you don't think about me, a grown-ass man in the world, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he, he kept it 100. He was just like, yo, I just wasn't ready to face the consequences, man. And I can't judge him off of a mistake he made 40 years ago. Um, I was just like, look, bro, I ain't about to be calling you dad and pop yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be cool. We are gonna be friends, and this is see what happens. Can't, can't, you gonna have him come to your party? If he wants to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should ask you that. My bad. My yeah. bad. Yeah. But speaking of which, though, did your dad have a haircut? What is that? Where you got it from? Your dad is still alive. No, he no, died he in prison. He did. Yeah. Oh, I was sorry. about to ask him how you feel not having your dad. Cause he's alive, right? He's yeah, out of prison, alive. right? Nah. Oh, he's still in prison. He get out next year oh, wow. after That's, 30 years. You gonna put him on? After 30? What, what you mean put him on? You put some paper in his pocket, show him how to get some paper. It's, it's easy. My dad bought me a car for my 16th birthday. From wow. Where? From, from prison. Come on. Oh. Wow. <laughs> you think he got it? It, it wasn't. Think- I don't got to yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where you get it from. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it ain't one of them situations where it's even gonna be hard for him to so to you ain't mad at him when you come out it's up we outside yeah, no, he he was he was a hustler my dad went to jail for drugs and selling drugs he had record stores like so my that's where DNA, you get your hustle from but you just not good at it yeah just yeah, better than you his mama though and my mom too but my dad mom been, been, she been hustling you get you get stories stories that you hear from your parents even though he not there yeah. like my dad put his sister through college like cash like basically you know. everything you do so when you when i look at it is that you get the inspiration nieces, from somewhere type stuff exactly yeah. so it, the inspiration comes from there so when he come home it's up that's what's up yeah that's yeah. gonna be crazy that's gonna be crazy mm-hmm. you ever ask him like yo where, where you hiding all this money at you know what i'm saying how you keep paying for all this Man, stuff listen, and uh he went through so many attorneys and stuff now to the yeah. point he ain't never asked me for a dollar mm-hmm. i've never gave my father money 
he even in calls, the jail, like since- even still now, I have not. He has never said, "Yo, I need some." Mm. I've did, never. He did it right. Like he has never asked me for money. Wow. Literally gave me a, a a class. All me and my brothers all got cars for our 16th birthday. Like he used to send me money, like two hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> some people, parents that be there, can't do that. That's Not that's some, heavy. most. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you got anything planned that you gonna do for him when he when he get out? Like, oh, it's up. I'm probably. I know we gonna. Me and all my sales. The biggest thing though, it ain't even for me. My grandmother is is up in age and she is dwindling. And her biggest thing is that I just want to be here. All her kids is out. This is the last one. The the only one who's incarcerated that's not there. Yeah. And she got his car still. Then her wow. big mama's cars. House. His car is at her house. It's it's mm. it's a '96 Bronco. It's beat to hell now. You know, mm. but it you went can't white, touch was it? it? No. no, you can't <laughs> touch it. You can't touch it. You still got insurance on it? Is no. insurance on it? No. <laughs> but she she like yo, I'm gonna come back to you thigh meat. But um, <laughs> but yeah, you can't touch it. So you know she waiting for him to come home. Like I so, it's you, for her. I think I gotta you should him pick home. him up in the PJ in your PJ. Nah, listen. Ooh. That'd we got to get the pit. He got to come home, but we got to get him. My grandmother got to. Yeah. She got to see. Exactly. That's the first like, thing. It ain't. My yeah. grandma out house. there in Stockton. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. He. That's the first thing is that my grandma got us. He got to get home to her. Yeah. It, that's the biggest thing. He make it home to her. Do so. you feel like you would have been another? Do you think life would have been at all different if he wouldn't have been away this whole time for you? Do you think as a man, you would be any different right now if he would have been there? My dad is a real nigga. My brother was eight years old with a 380. My dad said, told my mom, I'm gonna have some ugly ass sons with a whole bunch of money. We had rock rollers. Yeah, he was he right had, about that. Like he had rock rollers in the, in the house, yeah. everything. You know what I'm saying? Dang. Mm-hmm. I got a so, quick question while we still on the daddy subject. Yeah. Like, you know, me and Marcus, we talking. I, I know the story. And I know yeah. his dad from the home. Yeah. So like, bro, I never heard you talk about your pops. Yeah. That's what I was asking. Like, we know the story. We know the what you say on stage real quick. Yeah. Daddy in jail. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what's so up with your pop? My, Did you know him? I knew my, no, I didn't really know him. I saw him in prison a few times. My mom said he was a good dad up mm-hmm. until about two. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I don't feel no, I, I know so many people, they so, they harbor so much, kind of like Alex, so much mm-hmm. pain and not knowing them. My mom and grandma took such a good care of me, dog. Yeah. That it was no, like, I'm just saying, but do you, him, like when you was talking to him and stuff? No, nah, I what? just, I didn't talk to him often. You didn't get, okay. I probably talked to him like 10 times that I can re- remember in my life. Yeah. Did you was, look like him? Yeah, I look like him. Yeah. <laughs> not that I don't think, but my mom, yeah, yeah. that's what my mom said. Mm-hmm. That's but yeah, it's crazy just that I'm so happy they took such good care of me. That I didn't, it what didn't, year did he pass? Probably about five, six years ago. He had a stroke in prison. Was you making noise five, six years ago? Uh, Yeah, I was doing okay. Yeah, I was doing fair. I when mean, you heard it, what did you think? It was just like, yeah, like well, man. Dang, did you have questions? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, I just like, all right. No tear, no sadness. Just like, oh, right, dang, that's sad for me. I was like, dang, that's a bad job. Damn. <laughs> Not a bad <laughs> job. Was he ever getting out? No, oh, he had life too. Yeah, my dad was, got life too. It was over with. He ain't. Yeah. He wasn't getting out. So you, you was raised by your dad, mm-hmm. and do that make you like? I know, like you said, like some dudes had issues growing up. Like you feel like it gave you more confidence because, like, you up here with thigh, get your thighs out and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. do that type of like confidence come from like having a dad? Because I'm yeah, probably I mean, gonna he, leave my son if he think he gonna wear have his thighs. Nah, out. I mean, I think the main thing he he said was like, <laughs> "No, I'm joking." I'm joking. <laughs> Stay in the gym, you know what I'm saying? We don't want you to get 300 pounds, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, but uh, <laughs> not even legs, thighs. <laughs> you know, you know, I think uh, definitely, I think you see an example of like, you know, like hard work. Uh, I think it's just less questions, but I think you still have questions because like, you know, like my dad, his dad died when he was younger. And so it's like, you know, I think he still had questions about his upbringing. It really just confidence, I'm saying though, like, you, like, I, take the time I was playing, but yeah, yeah, the, no the confidence and things like that, when you look out growing up, like when you get ready to do things or life challenges, is it something like that you feel confidence came from your dad? Cause the mom only could do so much, but the dad is like, boy, you hear his voice in the head. I would think just, you know, do it or else. Yeah, you know what I got from my dad? My dad was the guy that bought all the CDs and all the books 
he that no money down program he had that stuff in the attic so that's that's really what got me on the entrepreneurship tip because i was like they like sometimes honestly he wouldn't finish all the books but i'd be up in there like let me listen to what that thing is going yeah, on and so the company you and your brother yeah right like there. He, he had a cleaner business when we were younger so i saw the example of that and so i think stuff like that made me feel that was an entrepreneur yeah they had mm -hmm. a cleaner business from like from the time i was in second grade until like 11th grade mm -hmm. and so that made me just like okay you can jump out here and you can you could do this. He was always working hard. So, you know, he was always going, you know, he was going to do his thing. Where are you but from? You Jamaican, African, what is it? Florida. Fort Lauderdale. Where are your parents from? <laughs> like, what's your, nice, like what's your, your culture? Just black. Same Just as black. everybody else, I think. <laughs> no, nah, I'm, I'm Jamaican. My family's Jamaican. No, oh, why really? do I oh, think okay. his family is African? I don't know why. I you just say that. It was African. <laughs> I it was African. Really? Yeah. That's just regular. Is just don't claim it. These, these jokes aren't going too well for Marcus. It's okay. No, it's Maddie. It's Maddie. It's Maddie. Maddie. It's Maddie. Maddie. It's Maddie. It's African. I mean, I think, I think if, when I did my ancestry, it says like of half course not, that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but like, of course I, that. But he, he you mix up with Maddie. Yeah. Because nope. you and Maddie, okay, Maddie is 100% African, but I know yeah. Maddie had the, the, all the hard dad stories. That's him. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Nigerian. Yeah. But y'all used to play back. Y'all were so close. Yeah. And that's why I'm like You thought he was African. I too. thought that no, I wasn't being I think we all are in a sense. You know what I'm saying? But let me say this too. I had the best stepfather on the planet. Yeah. Let me just mm -hmm. get that out of the way. I yeah, had a dad. Stepfather, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had a dad. And mm -hmm. when he met my mom my step in Syracuse, New York, it. you know what I'm saying? My stepdad was it. And I only say stepdad so you understand I'm not talking about that dad. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like you call him dad? Call him pops. pops. Okay, pops. Like that's my guy. He's fine. Yeah. He's a, he's my he's a guy. Bomb. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to say that. Like, was he, he at the prime party? He's at whatever, <laughs> anything. Yeah. He's always there. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. And he just uh, the perfect example of a father. You know what I'm mm. saying? He was mm. military. You know, he's a sergeant. He was kind of hard on me in the beginning or whatever. But he was just like getting me real structured. And I saw how he treated my mom. So people were like, yeah, I married at 19 and 20. Mm. I had the perfect example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, so I seen a nigga write my mom love notes. I seen surprise parties. Well, that's why I, ain't I seen get married, surprise bro. cars and all, huh? That's why I ain't get married because I never seen nobody do it right. Mm -hmm. So later in life, I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Nah, I, that's, yeah. I was I already knew what kind of yeah. husband I wanted to be based off of him. But mm -hmm. yeah, shouts out to uh, yeah. pops. But everybody yeah, on right. this couch though, I think is an example. Whether it's like father passed in jail, stepfather, just meeting a father, had a father. Like you can win no matter where you are. That's yeah. You can find a way to get some success. You can find a way to win. And so like, you could have used that as an excuse, but you use it for a reason. Yeah. You could have used, hey, my dad ain't here as, a, as an excuse, but you use it for a reason. So yeah. I think it's still proof that, hey, you have five guys with totally, all of us have a different dad story. It, none of us are the same, but still yeah. mm -hmm. sitting here. Sharing all successful. Yeah. yeah. And then you also could get, become a father to somebody as time move on. <laughs> 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 You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. You hear it? Yo, listen. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. I ain't gonna lie. To you. <laughs> you screaming, laughing like Whippy. Do you think right now, if this switch the subject onto something else, LeBron? Okay. Don't you start think no he, shit. Won't be. I'm a Lakers fan. <laughs> you a Lakers fan? I am. If he wins, will he be? The, will this make him the greatest player ever? Um, I think I think LeBron is a great player. It's, it's tough for me, you know. He the, Kobe was a, a different beast. You know what I'm saying? I agree. But I think LeBron is an incredible basketball player on the field. If he wins this year after scoring the title, that definitely would help his case. I think I just think he's the he goal won the of, scoring title this year. I mean, the, uh, the all-time scoring leader. Oh, oh, yeah. oh number all one, scoring, yeah. numero uno. Okay. I think he's I think he's the, the one of the greatest of so our generation for sure. No one question of, about it. One of the greatest. One of the greatest. I mean, Steph is great too, bro. He ain't done. Steph by far is the greatest shooter that the NBA has ever seen. Yeah. It's not it's not questionable. Like the whole thing is That's he fair. believed that LeBron's better than Jordan and he's not. It's not there would be no Jordan without LeBron. There would be no LeBron without Jordan. Bro, that's irrelevant of the conversation. My thing with Jordan, like, and I'm just gonna say this, because y'all trying to bait me. I'm gonna say this. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna say this. Look. Yo, my man argues people on Instagram for the, two days. The reason why I like LeBron over Jordan is simply because of workload. And what I mean by workload is this. I want y'all to answer this. Okay. When you look at the end of the <clears> game, <throat> the stats, right? Pippen, Sorry. rebounds, um, what? what, what the, the top five, um, you know, points, rebounds, mm -hmm. assists, that type. LeBron James is the only player in NBA history to lead his team in the finals in points, rebounds, and assists. He's the only person in NBA history to lead his team and the opposing team in points, rebounds, and assists. And I'm only saying that because of this. Jordan 
scored points. Pippen did everything else. What you call it? Got um, rebounds. Rodman. Yeah. So Jordan, ba- I mean LeBron, basically did Pippen, Jordan, and Rodman's job. Something Jordan never had to do. Jordan just had to score the bucket. That's cool. Yeah. That's all you gotta do is score the bucket, bro. Yeah, it's yeah five dude, he, he was floor. defensive player of the year, though. It's five people on the floor on everybody's team. I don't Man, think LeBron's ever got defensive yeah, player Yeah, but what I'm year, telling though. you is who whoever scored on Jordan's team, whoever scored more points than Jordan. Jordan had a night where he was – LeBron is like more like Magic. LeBron is a pass-first player, so he's passing the ball. He's number five in assists out of, in NBA history. You I'm understand saying, what I'm saying? Five in assists number in NBA five, history? LeBron is top wow. ten in three different subjects, bro. Wow. So we keep comparing him to a shooting guard. No, compare LeBron and, 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 and Kobe. Compare them to. They are assassins. They are the ones that attack the ball. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This nigga got a whole highlight, an hour-long highlight of behind the, behind the back blocks. Jordan wasn't chasing nobody down and blocking their shot. They different players. A, 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 a power forward. 100% and a damn... though, and, and LeBron, we going to do business together. So I'm on your side, brother. No, come on. <laughs> but one, but 100% though, he's, he, he was able to go do all of that from seeing MJ. That's cool. That's cool. I, he's the greatest off the court player that the sports has ever has He's ever that seen. too. Yeah, I would agree with that. But he said he's that too. He's that too. He said you all. Then again, I, I don't have a problem with nobody yeah. having Jordan one and LeBron number two. That's fine. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, how can you? It's an argument now. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, Before yeah. five years ago, they used to be no, 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 no. I'm like no, it's an argument now because guess what? Even the current players, right? The statistics just came out. Jordan is 58 percent votes. Um, Bron is 30% votes. But guess what? Three years ago, he was at 13% votes. So it's switching. All the analysts are our age. All the analysts grew up off Michael Jordan. What happens when these niggas who's born in 2000 are the ones writing the, writing the papers? Guess who they saw? Guess who they grew up off? LeBron. Guess who was the greatest of their era? LeBron. Mm-hmm. So it's going to change. I'm seeing it change. Yeah. I'm seeing the numbers change every day. Yeah. So I'm in this argument by myself right now. But... <laughs> yeah. Y'all no, watch. It sense about change. Y'all watch. They, they'll cook them in the comments. Don't yeah, worry they, about they it. can't cook nothing because <laughs> I got everything they need. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. He's going to pull out the old John Stockton mm-hmm. photo. And that ain't even John Stockton. That's a whole nother like old a, white uh, man. That's a, yeah, I know his name. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you got to believe that Jordan was dominating the best players. He was just dominating those guys. But he he could only play against who was out there, though. That's But who is that LeBron's fault? Is that Jordan's fault, you mean? No, is it LeBron's fault? Because they keep comparing, bro. Listen, no, you, when you, Steve Nash you, you is beat, counting out Jordan, you're trying to discredit Jordan rings. No, I'm not trying to discredit nothing. I'm just, Who I'm got just bringing more rings, right. Jordan. Jordan, but this is the thing. I mean, that's what they say. To think about though. But understand this. And Jordan didn't pay not, 20 years either, did he? Listen, who? That's because Jordan was tired of shit in year 15. You ever see Jordan on the Wizards? He looked <laughs> tired as hell. You know why? Because it was a rougher basketball was rough. Yeah, or then, he bro. just wasn't built like LeBron James. You, That's it. He didn't have How about that? It was a little bit more physical. physical. He built like right? the it was not a little yeah, bit more Yeah, it was a lot. Physical. It was a lot more physical. But five more years. You just like boxing, to be the leader. Bro, listen, to be the team rounds. Bro, in boxing. year twenty. Yeah. He would have got flipped up in the air trying to jump like bro, that. Bro, listen, <laughs> year twenty. He would have lived. Kobe Bryant what had the highest average of a play, player to play play that long. He averaged like thirteen points. Yeah. LeBron led the league in thirty point games this year in year twenty. This nigga's a machine, bro. Yeah. We've never seen nobody like this before. Technology. And again, I'm okay with somebody having Jordan number one and Braun number two. That's yeah. not my argument. Nah, I just, I'm just laughing because I just know it get him going. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not for shit show. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, for me though, I think, I think like a Kobe and a Michael, they just passed the eye test of like what people like to see. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, nah, but sure, cap. they like nah, all nah, that nah, nah, killer nah, instinct. Wait. Yeah, like the nah, killer nah, instinct. Nah, Give me the ball. No. Isolate. Let me do this. That's what people like. Eye test is like an Allen Iverson. Past Ooh. the eye test of like, no, no, eye like test to, is like, it's like, it's like, yes, the other, well. like, yeah, yeah, like the exciting, like, okay, give me the ball, let me, it's on my that's, shoulders. That's AI. No, no, you can't put Kobe and Jordan on in the eye finals. Test. They're they're animals. They're the best, some of the that's best. What I'm ever that's do the it. eye, though. That's like, okay, even no. Steph is trying to get it now a little bit. AI Steph is, is like, give eye. me the ball. Allen Iverson was the eye. Yeah. Like, Steph it was different. Steph different. Steph shoots, right? He, Steph he's like, and he's going to run you. He going to make you tired the whole game. Yeah. But you think he got that good just from his dad? Who? Steph. No. From his father? That's Gen- another thing. Genetics. Kobe, Kobe, I mean, I don't, I don't Kobe know if LeBron had Steph. a dad. Did LeBron? No, nah, but Kobe's story. dad was in the NBA too. I know that, but I'm right. saying Steph's dad, and they said Steph's dad was a shooter he was too. Good. He was good. Mm. Dale? He's, he's, I'm not even a basketball guy. Genetics. I just it jumped helps. into I mean, this. I don't know. Did it help the ball brothers? I don't know. We have to see. Yeah, their career's not over with yet, but. They all made it. They made two it. Of them made and their dad was a football guy. Yo, let me, ask you, let me ask y'all football this, guy. though. Oh, he's a basketball player. I'm trying to buy a team some one day. We got what team would you that. buy? So what they're Probably saying right now. Because he played T-ball in yeah. high school. 
but they say, but me. they saying right now, no, I don't, I'm not familiar much about it, but they saying the teams to buy right now are esports teams. Mm. You buy them for some millions. They they said the Utah Jazz, I, I may be wrong, but they bought them for so cheap. Like last time they sold, I don't know if somebody could do the read. It the might Kings, be twenty two million or something. It, it, it might was, be the Kings. It something was something for like it was um it was in nineteen eighty six for like twenty two million. Ninety six, ninety six for like uh I wanna say it was like nine, nine point eight and no, it gotta be more than that. No, it wasn't. Wow. It was like it was it was it was under ten million. Um it was one of them teams I seen it on my guy page and he broke it down. It sold for nine million. It was the Kings. And I want to say it was some. I want to say it was lower than that, but it was. Let's just say it was a single digit million. It was under ten. Million, bro. Hmm? We need to. We need. But to it's search. five. It's five. It's five hundred, or it's worth what now? It's worth a lot because but, Chris Webber was his point of that. If Chris Webber would have got paid um, X amount in stocks and ownership of the company, mm. what he would have made and what he would be worth now right if now. he would have took stock in the business in the in the actual company. And that's where it goes into learning ownership versus um, the, the So what if we could get a minority stuff. stake for like 30 million or something? We should go raise that funds and go get a stake in the team. I would like to see what it looks like on the business side though. Cause you yeah, know, Jay-Z did saying. for a little bit and then he got out. Yeah, find out them. find out like what the returns is. Like, yeah, I would love to know yeah. that. Jay-Z businesses though. Cause I wouldn't yeah. just do it just to say like, you're like on the basketball Serena, team. Uh, like, was it Serena? Serena? Yeah. Yeah. She was a part of the Dolphins. Like some of them do it, but it's not like they Some of them like, get out for certain Usher reasons too. too. Yeah. Usher with the Hawks. Jesse Isler own a piece of the Hawks. They they bring. I want to own a piece of a sports team. Though. They're uh, getting Usher paid. Had Cleveland. Yeah, but Cavaliers. they bring they bring people in. I don't know about they Usher. bring people in. Some uh, people come in for attention and PR moves. That's true. Yeah. Like Drake with the Toronto Raptors. LeBron owned. Yeah, he he, he kind of owned Canada. Like, I don't know if that's a PR move at that point. Right. Like he run. He he owned Canada. Like the, Drake, is he still a part of um, the Raptors? Yeah, we was at the the stadium. He got the whole. He, he built the state. I, wow. I don't know if he built like or sponsored, Center, but right? I think he built their training facility where we went. Oh. And it's crazy state of the art. Like Word. it's. Did fire. you play ball that day? Nah, I was late. I had to call. That's why. You always got an excuse. He <laughs> <laughs> said you played ball that day. Of course you did. <laughs> You know, you be talking. We, yeah, we just play. I remember when you. I remember I when you posted it on your stories. You had posted the owl. I thought. I thought he was at Drake's house. He was capping. <laughs> yeah. He, 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 just, he just gonna put the no, owl. He shallow. You think? I'm he thinking he sick. at Drake's house. Yeah. He was sick. Man. I had to go to Shoddy Page and see where they was at. He was capping. No, listen. No, listen. <laughs> All I did was, I, all I did, we was, it was the OVO training facility. It was the owl on the basketball court. I took a picture of the owl. And that was it. No content. He wasn't there. So because he was supposed to be there and wasn't, it's Stop killing out. You FOMO. This is King FOMO. I ain't gonna lie. That dude man, jump on a flight. Yo, wait, what? I he hit him like, so quick. He was like, hell no. Right? And, and he was like, hell no. Y'all like Drake I House? Like, I said, I said, it's up. All I said was. It's up. Yeah, it's going. <laughs> I was pissed. I'm like, y'all let Drake yo, house. <laughs> yo, yo, my man, my man was in my DM for six hours. Like, nah, you. He was sending me stuff. Like, nah, you lying. <laughs> and I'm like, I sent him the trophy. I was sending him little things like trophies. Because hey. <laughs> I know 500. If he was really at at Drake at Dre's house, he would have posted that. Yo, so listen. Posted yo, like, we, we had gone at the end of the year though. Yeah, yeah. Ghana. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. gonna go to uh Market Mondays in Ghana, but we're gonna do a round while we out there. I'm thinking we gonna plant some wells. Water. That's where us uh, uh yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, so yeah. we're gonna while we out there, we're gonna have our own thing running plant. Yeah. When is that? That's like December. Actual. You know what's so crazy? I got a cousin out there. She's, uh, I wanna say she's part of the presidential December. family. I'm not sure. I got it's a like cousin that's part of prisoner's hours. family, like as far yeah. as security and stuff. Yeah. I wouldn't mind going over there. I want to see like what I'm going, bro. I want to see a like, movie. like, like I got the huts, people, nigga. Like, yeah, like you know, like your people look like you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. like, I like what tribe? I just been waiting for the right reason to go. Like I just ain't want to go to Africa. Just okay, go we gonna crush them, bro. Hey, we gonna wait, print some water. Well, I asked a question the other day, right? Um, and I just want y'all feedback. I want to see if if what I've seen is that being well traveled, traveling the world, we all have traveled. Mm -hmm. even when you was traveling on your buddy pass um when you travel even though it was a little struggle trip is there <laughs> have you ever seen um places another place like atlanta and the reason i say that is this in atlanta the amount i told people atlanta gives me ultimate confidence but it's also the reason that my balloon pops other places 
Like I became a successful entrepreneur here because I had the confidence to be anything I want to be. It's okay. Where I go, I'm accepted. I feel good. I walk into the airport, it's up. Mm -hmm. And you take a flight anywhere and everything changes when you get off. I've never been to Africa, but I said, there's no other place in the world for black people that give you the confidence to be a business owner, that give you the confidence to go to college, that exists in the environment, you go to restaurants, anywhere you go cars, is black that. excellence. Mm -hmm. That's true. The luxury, who you see in Gucci, who you see in Prada. When I go to Milan and I'm in Italy and I'm in Maldives, everybody's still wearing Prada. Let's not say it's, yeah. they still wearing it, but it ain't us. Yeah, facts. Mm -hmm. Atlanta is the place where you see it. Yeah. Home entrepreneurs. For black people. Yep. Is Atlanta more empowering than Africa or a hub for black excellence than Africa? Hey, you're looking at this and you're probably enjoying this episode and the strategies and the gems that I give you. This is just a fraction of what you learn in my mastermind, right? I would love for you to be able to learn more information on how he's able to help Carter Cofield make a million dollars in one single day, how he's able to help Rochelle Parks make over $500,000 in a day, learn how he's able to help Tevin grow his Instagram following from 70,000 followers to upwards to 200,000 followers within two months. And again, those results are not typical, let me be very clear, but they are possible for those who are willing to put work in, energy, and effort. If you're looking at this video right now, I want you to go to the website Mastermind with Neo, N E O dot com, so you can apply to see if you're a good fit for our mastermind. This is specifically for someone looking to grow their digital business, right? Even though y'all probably even know David Shan, Sleepers for Suckers, he's inside of my mastermind. You probably know Sonya, the student loan doctor, he's inside of my mastermind. You probably know Darius Daniels, he's inside of my mastermind. Those are just a few more people who are absolutely crushing it as a result of being inside of the community. So listen, if you're looking at this, right, and you're probably looking at the episode like, man, you're dropping so much gems but can you imagine how many gyms you'll get when you're actually inside of the environment, when you're tapped into the community? What I want you guys to go to right now is mastermindwithneo.com so you do not miss out on your opportunity to get tapped in. You will have to apply, you will have to get on the call, and hopefully you make the cut to be a part of what we got going on. I'll see you on the inside. Let's get back to the episode. I mean, this coming from me going there, I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, Atlanta, I definitely feel is empowered because I feel like part of the spots of Africa I've been to, they're, they're heavy impoverished. So I don't know what's going on. Like I wasn't going out there hanging out with the Sultans or, you know what I mean? I just, I'm going to tourist areas. Mm -hmm. So I can't really say for me. Personally. Africa's a very rich place. Yeah. You know what I mean? To the yes. top, to the leaks and things of that nature. Um, yeah. I don't know personally as like how we sit on this couch and didn't have a father, section eight, come from the mud. I don't know how much of that's going on over there. Cause I just never, you know, yeah. experience that with anybody over there yeah. but I can't, I'm sure I've been there. it's so probably the same over there, this year, over there no I'm saying to answer the question I don't no. know I, only thing I know is like I, I know people that have tried to to mm. donate to because like some people are like yo why do they not have it well a lot of it's corruption people get the money sent over there but it don't make no, it no, to the show. we talk about money it's money there the thing is they show us one side it's money in Africa mm. there there is Wealth in Lo Africa. Logos. Yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> There's no, they wealth. definitely make like, money. G wow. wagons, rack of G wagon, leave yeah. on the side of the road. It's money there. We get shown a certain part, mm -hmm. but what I say is like, I want to go experience the culture and see if it feels how it does here. Yeah. In Atlanta, it feels so good to be black in, and, yeah. and and but that just made me ask a question. Yeah, it's no, not a real. statement. Yeah. It's a question. So y'all, we'll find out this year. Yeah, we find yeah. out. But you know, but I, I totally agree with you with the whole Atlanta. I, I put Atlanta on my back, bro. I don't care where I go. I don't care what city is popping. You know, a lot, a lot of the conversation now is that Houston is the no, the Atlanta. it ain't. You know what it. And don't get it like twisted. Atlanta. I love Houston, and no, this ain't no shot. I love Houston. Me too. Love it. He cleared but, um, that up quick. Listen, man. I see it. Houston ain't, Houston ain't got nothing on Atlanta. It don't. It's damn bar none. It don't. No, I there, that, there's no place Houston in the United States that has anything on young <laughs> black <laughs> entrepreneurs <laughs> over Atlanta. And I've been in, there's not a state that has it. Mm -hmm. Let That's me say this, though. So we, I just want to jump back on the Africa thing, right? Because when you, you know, we talk to girls and they be like, oh, I got an African. Mm -hmm. like, it's something. It's something. It's, it's a group. It's a. It's a. It's Nigerians. I don't know what it is. You know, and Nigerians outside of the. Money. You know what I'm do. saying? Outside of the scamming, and you know, you, you hear people yeah. say that like, nah, it's it's some Nigerians cooking. Yeah, they are. Like they really work and they really grind it. Even the forex and all that. Like, 
shots out to y'all boys, but you know what I mean? Like <laughs> everybody, you, you, you just hear that and they be trying to. Shout yeah. out to what, the Forex boys? No, I'm just saying, for like learn, stocks, whatever it is, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like everybody just be trying, trying to say it came from this or that, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. they the girls that they deal with in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. a lot of girls, and that, and that might just be me because I, yeah. I deal with all the, you know, the dancers mm-hmm. and stuff like that. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm trying to get me an African. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't think get that's it twisted. all across America. Don't get it twisted, them Africans. Yeah, they get money. Yeah, they get some money, you know what I'm saying? They're not afraid mm-hmm. to spend it on women too, I heard. So. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. That's a the fact. You give them around for their money though. And I'm around a rich ass African all the time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they oh, too. man. Oh, <laughs> yo. Mm. Forever I love Atlanta, though, man. Yeah. Sure. Forever I love Atlanta. Gosh, bro, Atlanta been so good to me, bro. Like, I'm going to defend it to the end. We got our BS, you know what I'm saying? We got our, mm-hmm. you know, crime had, had an uptick for a minute. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Do y'all feel like the crime was kind of going down a little bit? Or, well, you know the best. You 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 the news channel, so you tell us. <laughs> nah, I, I, I gotta stay tapped in. I, I definitely yeah, want to yeah. know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. What's going on? Alex be on top of it though. Got, like he got moved, you know what I'm saying. We got moved. That's why you, you know got to move villagent. Yeah. I used to always tell people this right here, like in Atlanta, right? Like with the beef and uh, you know you hear killing and stuff like that. A lot of times these people know each other. Mm-hmm. That's one. It's one that. city that not like random. Actually. Yeah, when it happens, mm-hmm. it'd be like, what's the underlying? You say a break in the car is cool, but when you don't Yeah, break in the car, yeah, everybody gonna get that. You're gonna get that work. You come to Atlanta, they're gonna get in, they gonna break in your car. <laughs> Understand that. You better off rolling your windows down. I don't yeah. care how cold it is, leave your windows the doors down. open. Yeah, all that. If you come to visit, yeah, they're gonna get Bro, you. They leave some water they in there. Don't leave them. nothing they in your broke car. The window of my wife. Matter of fact, they stole like I had three guns in the car. Yeah, they're gonna take that. All well, my guns out here in the city. And they figured it out without even breaking the windows. Come on, bro. They yeah. gonna do that, but I'm talking about like, and you better have some money for the water boys too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. keep you some singles. I've been seeing them. The brother, I'm gonna go crazy. Mm-hmm. They, I haven't seen them. They uh, they put out like a yeah, they, uh, they, they can't do it. Ordinance where they can't do oh, it. They can't do it no more. Yeah. I, mean, I haven't been seeing them. I'm surprised they listening though. I see them sometimes. They, they be on scooters now. Though. They pop in. They now. in and out. Yeah. You don't see them now. They ain't posting. Yeah, they come. They out had there. a good thing going though, man. Like for a while, like I wasn't mad at them. Why we showing love to them though? Why we showing love to Atlanta? What's your what's your top restaurants? I'm just. I like Umi. Umi, my spot. Never been to Umi. Yeah, Umi is my spot. Um, they got a vibe, but ambiance, dark lights. You know, say kind of remind me of New York. It's like real intimate. You real close to people. Yeah, it's, gotcha. So Umi's my spot. What you got? Up? I don't know. I don't know if I got a favorite spot here. Uh, let me think about it. Come back to me. My favorite. Well, good nigga, shouts out to Sudos. Yeah, you know what I'm saying <laughs> he took us there you know the other day. Yeah, mm-hmm. greasy behind. Uh, yeah, all that. Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got a shout out girl, hungry home girl, bro. I just go to her page and just whatever she suggests, I go there and I just hungry home girl. Home, bro. You a foodie though? Shouts out to her. Yeah, yeah. I, I go to about yeah, two, he like three spots a week. I like Pasha though. Pasha. Yeah, them lamb yeah, chops. I like Pasha. Pasha I got the salmon. best food. It was meat. good. Who mm-hmm. lamb chops better, Pasha? Or Pasha Stryker? got the best whatever. I think so. Striker or Pasha lamb chops? I think Striker probably. Striker for sure. Yeah. Shout, shout out to my chef. Pasha? Yeah. Um, that rice with that shit too? Yeah. And the potato? I, we can't talk about it. The I plate rock. is crazy. Shout out to Striker though. Chef Rob, yeah, I would, I would, I would. Oh, the Jamaican spot. Yeah, that's one of the ones I frequent the most. Like yeah. when I was eating oxtails, they the best ones I've tasted, dog. Yeah, I definitely. I'm gonna, rock do, with I'm gonna chef dig the damn breakfast at Barney's though. Yeah, I've been with breakfast. Damn yard bird. Yeah. That and then dinner I'll be at Devon's. Oh yeah, that's your spot. They husky oh, yeah. behind salmon plates and all mm-hmm. that crap. Yeah, I yeah. shout out the crew Alpharetta too, though. You know that's saying? a fact. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, I, I pack, Survive. I pack your spot out that you night, did. bro. On my y'all didn't know nothing yeah. about Alpharetta. I, I told y'all support, about it. Though. Yeah, we we brought like no two, three hundred people through First your joint. All these dudes was talking about Alpharetta, and it's now. Yeah, I just, I still don't like going up there. Too far away. Respectfully, he just said nobody knew about Alpharetta until he put us on. Yeah, I was not talking about. Bro, you live Alpharetta. Yo, you just you you live in Alpharetta. Money, nah, nah, nah. He's new money. He just moved there two years ago. Two and a half. I lived in Roswell. I lived off of Exit Eleven in 2016 and worked at the bank uh, Wells Fargo. And neither of those are Alpharetta. Yes, it is. Is I was Alpharetta. in Alpharetta. <laughs> what is it? We, yes. we worked in Alpharetta making seven dollars an hour. Yeah, yeah. So we met. I'm but it wasn't a different Alpharetta though. No, it wasn't. Yeah, no. welcome. That was I like, know you knew when you proud. Right there by the Ferrari there, shop. But you was in Loganville. I was yeah, kind you of was a Loganville Rockville. boy. Rockville. But you're like, yeah, three years ago. Like, yeah, relax. Either way, y'all still welcome. wasn't talking about it. And I said, listen. <laughs> New money, man. Yeah, new money, man. Listen, it's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna be I like honest. That. I still don't want to go to Alpharetta. It's too. When I gotta go to his restaurant, I'm like, yeah, that's a journey. I gotta why, go why, to his why, house. Why do you care when you got a driver? Yeah, 
Uh, it's still a journey. Damn, bro. Bro, he sent me. This dude sent wrestling. me to his uh, therapist. <laughs> I stopped going. It was fire, though, right? Yeah, it was too far, <laughs> though. I stopped going. It was like I a 38 minute ride. I in the backseat of Escalade watching TV. <laughs> Bougie. Bougie from Philly. He came a long way from Arcadia. Now I look I'll at him. He won't take boy. a 20 minute ride. You Don't play with that Arcadia, bro. The wifey, you complaining about that? On a crate. On a crate. He's just sitting on a crate. That's crazy, man. Yo, Too listen. Neil, was, that your most, was that your most struggle moment? On a crate? No, I was doing good then. No, what was your most struggle moment? I, I want to hear yours first. Most struggle moment was That's when boy. I was on a fruit truck. Mm -hmm. Couldn't eat. Oh, having eating the rice and gravy every day because yeah. I only could afford that till I got home at seven o'clock every day. I wasn't really making no money. Mm. I did that for like two years. Got off, went to go scrap some metal. Yeah, jeez, that was some times. Bro, bro, I used to do that too, bro. Scrap metal. Mm. Yeah, that crap. Pretty. Mm. What's your most struggle moment? So probably, um, shit. Probably the recognition. The recognition. When we yeah, I, that was. Uh, what about when you had to uh, give a car back or something? So you had to nah, hell no! Nah, I was nah. I was up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was sick of being a nigga. Then. It was, but I was just about it was, it was when I was working with him making seven dollars an hour. Yeah, because I wasn't doing the sales job. I was just like going through the flow. You know what I'm saying? My wife had a job. Uh, yeah, our rent was, was like five hundred dollars. Commission. It was seven dollars an hour base plus commission. Mm -hmm. but I ain't gonna lie. Jason used to come in there and just just sit there and not do nothing. Kick it. Mm -hmm. I, used, I was throwing parties too. Oh, okay, you know what I'm saying? So I had a some money doing other stuff. Yeah. And, what was the average check at, at that job? Oh my God. Don't give me the line. About 300. Like 300. Yeah. 300 a week? Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah. Yeah, 300. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wig commission. My rent was 500. <laughs> well, how you get 300 wig commission? Y'all, you wasn't selling shit. He wasn't doing nothing. No, I wasn't doing nothing. Socialized. My, my boy was the, the supervisor. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. He fired y'all, right? He fired, he fired him first. He fired you. Fired me. Yeah, that was the best decision. He cried when he had to fire me. Happened. He cried when he had to fire me. Yeah, I remember he tagged him. Y'all petty. Y'all be tagging him in posts. Oh, we tag him. Yeah, we ain't never shot the, shot the buck. buck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank you for firing me. It was a boy. Yeah, he had to get what a little struggle hustle? moment. Um, mine was probably like two years, two two years into my marriage. I ain't married no more, but like I had a bad year in business, and I had to move back in with my parents. And we had to move into like this one bedroom yeah, in my yeah, parents' Your wife house. moved in with you at that time? Yeah, my former yeah, 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 ex-wife. Yeah, yeah, she did. And I had my daughter in there. Yeah. I just oh, had three of y'all in the bedroom. Yeah, in one bedroom, on the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like one of them. Uh, you think your daughter remember that? Um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I got to ask her. But we had like, we literally had put all of our clothes in like one of those like portable closets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bro, that joint was tough. I remember one day, I tell the story when I be like speaking sometimes, not the whole story, because they don't know where I was at. But I came home one day and like the closet, it was so many clothes, it fell down. It, that's what it, it felt like. That was what happened to my oh life. My I was God. like, <laughs> "Dang, <laughs> overwhelming <Everything laughs> thing!" Yeah. Bro, I had to just walk outside. I was like, "All right, man, you gotta, you gotta get this together. Like, you got your mm. daughter sleeping on the floor. You know what I'm saying? That's what made me like. I said, "Okay, I got to get serious about like business because like I can't have, I can't allow another person. I and that was my fault too because like I just, you know, when you first start making money, you think it comes forever. Yeah, mm, and that was my fact, first time bro. that it stopped, and I was like, "Whoa, what you mean?" So it ain't nothing else coming, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I just had to, I had to adjust. And so that, it took me like, it probably took me like seven, eight months mm. to get out of it. So like doing that every day. And then it was like the, the face you got to keep on your face when you going out to talk to people. Like, cause you, now you trying to like, what was you doing at that time? Network marketing. Mm. I'm doing presentations. Like <laughs> they could change their life. Who Man. put you on network marketing, bro? My best friend, Isaac, he called me. Okay. They say your best friend? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's that's my guy. We've been friends since we was like. So, so you used to stand up there and be like, "You can do it." Yeah, bro. <laughs> and I knew, you, but the thing is, like, or were you were you enrolling people into your like? What product were you selling? Man, it was uh, coffee. What was it? It was like some type of lifestyle product. You don't even know what it was. I don't. Even, you know. Yeah, you know. I mean, it's funny. Uh, I was just talking to my best friend about it. Like, there's a part of my life that's like, I think it was so much going on that I almost can't remember all of it. But I remember like moments of it because literally I would like. I would come up with this thing. I was like, okay, I'm here physically, but mentally my mind is someplace else. Mm. And so even when I would come home, I was like, I'm here, but I'm not here. We we on the floor, but I'm not on the floor. Like literally. Mm. So I like, but I use the uncomfort of that. To like, like I'd be up early in the morning. I ain't even a morning person. I'd be up at seven. I'm working all day doing presentations. One, two o'clock in the morning. But it's like the it was that struggle, plus you on the outside, you telling people like, hey man, things are gonna get better. You can change your life. And it's like every day you going back home. You. Yeah, I'm talking talk to myself to at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like listening to audios, and uh, yeah, that was that was tough, man. But we got out, like we got out of it. 
Um, I learned a lot about myself during that time. So yeah, that was mm-hmm. that was definitely the tough. Yo, um, fun. you know who? You can't go back and find a bad picture of him. Him. <laughs> this dude don't got nothing. Ba- like you know when we talk about struggle, like he gonna he and he still ain't gonna say he ever struggled, Why? but. This dude he don't in got front a of a baby Benz or something. So was the, was the chains <laughs> always chain real? Was, were they always real though? Always. Listen, my baby mama, Benz. Listen, Sixteen years old. Sixteen years old. My mama spent twenty five hundred on my chain. Damn. Hey, eighteen years old. At eighteen, I had a two thousand six Charger in two thousand six. Mm. <laughs> at eighteen. Mm. At eighteen. Lie. Listen, I've How? been a, I've been yeah. a hustler and getting money my whole life. Yeah. But don't mean I don't have rough times. I had a nineteen ninety six school group. In, yeah, you talking about the two? <laughs> I had a 1996 Cougar with bad struts, and had to open the door from the outside. Y'all know how ugly a Cougar is? What? Yes. Listen, <laughs> let me explain something. I would hear y'all worst car too. I would hear oh everybody worst car. That Bro. Cougar is. <laughs> that Cougar. <laughs> listen, I had a 1996 Cougar. I went through a time where I had a. I used to live in Alfreda. Had a Benz, everything. Mm-hmm. She hit the fam. I fell on bad times. I was sleeping in my sister's house on an airbed, and it, and I was in such a rut. I used to wear a polo sweatsuit, King Griffey's. I wore it for like three weeks. Mm-hmm. So my sister had to pay my cell phone bill. Mm-hmm. Bro, I started working at a warehouse driving a 1996 Mercury Cougar. When I tell you, like my my ego and pride, like I I would work ten hour shifts and, and go every single day. They'd be like, oh you only got to work three days, four days this week. Nah, I will work seven. Mm. The airbed will go to the airbed will go flat and I, that's how I knew it was time for me to get up. Dang. <laughs> and I will go back to work. <laughs> right? Listen. I, seven hours right there. Bro, but I'm a hustler. <laughs> so I wasn't used to like I'm in your house. These damn kids is loud. My nieces and I love them they're my dogs, but I'm I'm I need me. I moved out at when I moved to Atlanta, I got my own spot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, bro. It took me, I was going to work so much, and I had to get out that cougar. It took me three months. I went and bought a Range Rover. <laughs> like, I still, yeah. for myself. Yeah. So I, if you go back, I went and bought a Range Rover. I'm working at the warehouse. Now I got a Range Rover. I figured out how to stack me, stack these checks, make a thousand a week. But I'm not, I'm not going through that. Yeah. Not fenced to been bro. a hustler a long time, boy. Yeah. That people be like, yo, y'all just start getting money. Like, you go look at my page 2019. We was playing with Bentley's. Like, we was buying cars and leasing them to other people. Man, listen, I'm not, I'm not been going. Him. You name him. Him mm-hmm. neutron. Him. I struggle. Yeah. Like, it's been times where I fall off and my wife had to help with money. I had a 2006 Dodge Charger because she was like, you better not buy a car. And I'm like, what? She's like, we need to buy a house. Mm-hmm. I had to drive a Charger. And I drove that. I owned it outright. It was no, and I said, all right, we bought a house. Mm. And I went right back to playing. Yeah. Like, yeah. But she, I drove a, we, we, we got an apartment. I drove a Charger. I had a 2006 Dodge Charger. What year? This is 2014, 15, mm-hmm. 15, about 2015. I went back to a Charger. We went, bought our house. Yep. She wanted a Benz, got her a little, Little Benz, and when I say baby mama, money, done, baby mama yeah, Benz, yeah, yeah. it ain't like I was playing with hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, but I was okay to where I can take a family vacation. Yeah, I would have ten, fifteen, twenty five thousand dollars saved. That was the goal. That's like we need to get ten thousand, fifteen thousand saved. Back then. Good money right it's now. Still good money now. That's not good money. And have so, a twenty in the tuck. Same twenty five thousand saved. Yeah, I'm not. I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. Let's not get lost with the real experience of. Like yeah, yeah. that's 25? what working at the warehouse. Most people don't got a stack, right? Bro, now. working at Say, the warehouse is what humbled me because you come from outside and you start to realize <laughs> your Ellis is disconnected. No, I'm not. No. <laughs> what? I you cash up that. Uh, <laughs> get out of here. Get out of here. I just did that before the set started. Get out of here, <laughs> they call him Alex Autopay. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, baby. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, it's just been a, it's been a journey. I'm gonna share something I ain't never shared before. Cause you know, I've had ups and downs. Like I, it's so dope because man, I feel like I was I always tell people this, right? I got friends that was like born into wealth, right? Mm. I got friends who have big brothers who are like A-list superstars. And I used to always when I was young and I used to be around, I'm like, damn, you so lucky, bro. Like you you ain't really had to work. Like you you I know you talking about you know, you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. You grew up and you got an A-list brother as a superstar. Like, damn, you're like you you living in the in the mansion with your brother, you know what I'm saying? You just living life. And I think about it, I'm like, damn, 
Um, would I rather have been born into wealth or went through the struggle and then come up? Like, which one would I, I appreciate more? Give me born into it all day. You want no, born into it? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I'll take that. Thousand percent. <laughs> sure. Give nah. me born into it. I don't know, man. It just hit different when you, when you, when you didn't have it and then you grind to have it. It even hit different well, your when kids, you've been, it'll be good. They, or it even hit no. different when you have it, lose it. And then you get it back again. Nah, but I ain't trying to lose it. You know bro. what I'm saying? Like, nah, nah, for nah, real. Like, yeah. I've had I've had that happen twice to me, bro. I've been yeah. up before. Not like this, but I've been up That's before. That's when you was in Miami, right? Yeah, lost it all. Up again. How you lose it all? Living beyond my means. Yeah. I'm gonna share something I he never shared that. before. And I'm gonna make it real. Yeah, <laughs> he I was. was. Good at that. I was. Boy. But let me tell you the good part about that. That nigga went crazy one year. I was a promoter. I, I wonder how they sent money back in the day without cash up and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, how did you yo get this ass home? <laughs> Yo, I threw, I was throwing parties, and you know, as a promoter, you got to live that. You a promoter, so you, you know what I'm saying? They automatically, for some reason, th think you rich because you throw parties. Yeah. Mm. So I never figured I rented this mini mansion in Alpharetta, and the, the rent was 3000 a month. Jason been there. Movie theater, gym downstairs, on the golf course, fly. But I'm literally living party to party. I'm doing one party a week, and if I have a bad Thursday, Boy, good luck paying that rent. So, oh, I'm, so I'm living in this house. I'm renting this car for my homegirl. And, and then, um, yo, I had a bad month. I think it rained every Thursday for like two months straight. Mm. And I ain't make no money. Got evicted from the, uh, from the mini mansion. And I had to go live with Beach and Skino. Shout out to them. They had a townhouse. It was six dudes in a three-bedroom townhouse. I was not going back to my mother's house, though. Mm -hmm. So I said, look, man, I need to come stay with you. They like, yo, all the rooms is booked. That was the struggle you, house, bro. They was like, yo, just figure it out. You, you could come in and just figure it out. And i never forget, when I realized I hit rock bottom. That nigga living on Camp Creek in, in the cut. Creek. Like, no, Cascade. Cascade, that's Ooh, what that. Yeah, I was on Cascade. In the cut. I realized I hit rock bottom when I had to take turns sleeping in the bed. Right, it was it was three dudes, one room, <laughs> and we had to take turns who slept in the bed. Hmm. I never forget, we didn't have no dishwasher, no laundry detergent, and I had to sleep on a mattress with no sheets on it. Hmm. Damn, <sighs> when you sleep on a mattress with no sheets, that three that dudes, was humbling. You know who you do? Skino, Skino from uh, yeah. Vegas. Yeah, Skino. <laughs> but three dudes. Yeah, bro. Did y'all had girls coming through or no? Yeah, <laughs> that's the crazy good. part. Yeah, we did, but um, bro, that's funny. The, the bathroom didn't work. The plumbing didn't work. So, damn, this is embarrassing. I must just say it. We would like, use the restroom in like jugs, and, and, it, and they would put the jugs in nah. this one room that wasn't occupied. Nah. Oh, dog. It, it was, was a, room a room that room wasn't the occupied? Jugs. These people. Why are you throwing it in the trash? Was, they about to come, up, was, come for you. Bro, it was bad, bro. And that just like that. pneumonia. <laughs> bro. Who y'all shitting? Remember. That's disgusting. It was bad. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> It was bad. And then at that moment, yeah. I had to, I had and to go you back shot to my mom people house. out. Yeah. I had to go to my, had <laughs> my to go to man, my mom. like, yo, tip, take my name out this episode, yeah. bro. Nah, but real talk. <laughs> that, that, that situation, though. I remember that. But I came to visit once. Yeah. I was like, yeah, this is beneath me. <laughs> so then you I'm felt like, nigga. Oh, man, you felt like, yeah. Like, yo, I am not to coming back to this place. Right? Kalani, you should see yeah. this shit. <laughs> yeah. But guess what, though? That house that I was living beyond my means in, ever since I got evicted from that house, it's been my mission. I'm like, I got to get back to that because I already got that exposure on mm -hmm. I know what it's like to have a movie theater in your house. Yeah. I know what it's like to have a gym in my house. You know what I'm saying? I know mm -hmm. what it's like to live on a golf course. Yeah. So since then, I you, took it personal. Like, yo, I'm going to bust my ass and I'm going to make sure when I get it. Bro, he used to do shit like, like that. Like, That's why you ain't got you another mini mansion. Hey, listen, I had to stop the episode. Listen, really quick. This is the book responsible for making so many people grow their social media, right? Their income, their impact and influence, leveraging social media. And you're probably looking at it like, yo, Neil, I don't feel like waiting for you to ship me this book, right, y'all? Go to my IG cash book right now, myigcashbook.com. Get a direct download to get this in your inbox so you can immediately start leveraging the strategies. This is over 86 pages. Every single chapter is going to give you a gym to grow your audience, to grow your impact, and to grow your, your influence, right? And I literally created it for you. This is the same thing I literally watch people go crazy with. So go to myigcashbook.com. Go ahead and claim your copy. It will be in your inbox. And when you do that, buy everything that it comes with. I got an IG course with it and a bunch of other things that I know is going to truly help you go crazy. Myigcashbook.com. Let's go.
mm-hmm. and that's why I built the golf course on it, the little <laughs> putt putt. Yeah, like, all right. I, I, I was. It was. Do personal. you call this the mini mansion now? This ain't no, no, ain't no <laughs> mini mansion. <laughs> <laughs> you let it slide. The same mini. You let it slide. Right. I'm like, you had to go get another mini mansion. Right. Nah, You're like, the same nah, mini, this huh? Same mini. Nah, but that exposure. If I wouldn't have been exposed to that, that li- even if it was, it was only for eight months. But I knew what it felt like to live like that. And I was like, nah, I got to get it back. How it feel now, though, you're about to have a huge party, bro, and have a grand opening in your crib. For, for yeah. you know, you've been there for a minute, but you, yeah. <clears throat> you I'm inviting man, I'm, some I'm people. To, I'm about to be 40 years old, man. What you think about that, inviting some some people, randoms? It ain't going to be no randoms. Um, no, plus ones, you know what I'm saying? It ain't going to be no plus ones. All right. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna invite be invite only most exclusive event ever. Um, y'all y'all before. saw what happened in my joint. They people bringing guests and all that. Maddie ran the play. This ain't that. <laughs> but um, you know, I be- said that this ain't that. It will be that. Uh, I hope not. Nah, and, and Alex is nice. Yeah. All right, come on. Forty years old, man. This is my first time ever throwing a party for myself. Mm, what you doing for it? Um, it's gonna be the Rock Nation brunch meets Atlanta. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so brunch mm. during the day? Nah, just that vibe. Yeah. Like people keep asking me what you want to wear. Wear what you would wear to the Rock Nation brunch. Dang. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have your favorite R&B artist is performing. Ooh. Um, it's going to be special. You know what I'm saying? My mm. bike, the backyard is like no other. Our current R&B fact. artists or like the both hookah and lamb chop come perform artists? Both. <laughs> Okay. Yo, Bad. so wait, are we drive, we driving there or what? Uber in? Nah, Uber or it's I'm gonna, gonna let y'all bring y'all cars. Okay, you know y'all got you know we gonna make a show in the front. Uh, I'm yeah. about to say yeah, it's gonna be a movie. It's gonna be hard to get in there. Like yeah. all facts. Yeah, it's gonna be hard only, parking on the street. Yeah, dope. shout to Tori Williams on the um, event planner. She gonna go crazy. You know it. I yeah, don't yeah. get the best. She don't miss. That's a fact. She don't. Yo, she was talking about you. She spoke at our event and she's like. All you said was make it blue. And you didn't even see no venue. You came the day of. She said, mm-hmm. most guests, they want to see it. And he came and he, he enjoyed what he Man, with him. And, yeah. I know it what she did. greatness do. blue was yeah. all that. Yeah. 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 Cap. Recession proof blue. All three of us got the same blue, though. Really? Yeah. What theme you going? What don't, theme? Don't what what color is mixed? Man, that bit <laughs> long. Brunch. Rock Nation yeah, brunch. I ain't no colors. Well, you know what? She's figuring it out. But you know, my, my backyard is like a lot of white. Yeah. So it's just going to be prestigious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can we still shoot some basketballs? Or no? Nah, so I got to take the basketball court down. I'm putting the stage. I came in. She's going crazy. Bro. The Man. stage with a court at? Yeah, we're taking down the court. It's going to be gonna be Taking down the court. Court. Yeah. Crazy. Wow. Yeah. Take Damn. the court down. You just slide past crazy. the court, though. We ain't going you know, to just slide. With his face on it. You got his face on basketball court. Yeah, his face on it. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. you we didn't talk about court your uh, your struggle period. My struggle pair. I did. I talked about the fruit truck. No, you living just in my grandma's room. room. Living in my grandma's room for a long time. I mm-hmm. stayed at home till I was 24. I mm-hmm. tell people stay home long as you can, dog. Yeah. You stay uh, home till you're 24? Listen, yes. If y'all listen to kids. me right now, don't feel like you got to rush out of the crib. That's a black people Stay thing. home as long as you need and stack up your chips and, and, and put it in the house. Because I ain't gonna lie, the black parents, they don't make you pay no rent. They letting you chill for a little minute. You said black parents? Some of them. Oh, no. Well, my grandma and my parents started charging me $50 rent. Oh, but no, you was with me. I was, yeah, I was with me. And she stayed at the crib too. 24, yeah, she, bro. I was growing as hell at 24. She, she only could come over. <laughs> that don't mean he wasn't growing. She didn't stay for a long time. house and all that, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like sat at the table with white Kobe. Listen, I, would, I, I agree with him, though. Listen, like, come on. A lot of my friends that are white. Their parents didn't force them to move out when they was 18. Not for sure. You don't when even they, know what you're doing at 18. But you know, when you black, it's like you, it's just like, yo, you grown now. Maybe he's outside. Do your at thing. And it's not really true. Like you really don't know nothing at that point. I my mom's house at the graduation. Ain't never went back. Yo, my biggest fear <laughs> for my 17-year-old, bro, is like, she don't really like listen to me too much like that. And I'm like, bro, I ain't trying to have you mess your credit. I will feel bad if anything go wrong. What you mean? You mess your credit up if you mm-hmm. we just put in recession proof. Mm-hmm. Out here playing. Yeah, but yeah. Now, imagine how far we'd be. Think about this, bro. How far would we be if we didn't have to recover our credit? Yeah. In years it take to recover the credit. You know when the <clears throat> black people learn about credit after you already mess, mess it up? up. Yeah, but yeah. no. years I've been in the hole with credit. It took me like yeah. six, seven years to get. When you paying a minimum payment, you cannot get out of that crap, dog. Yeah, that's no, a fact. But for seven it, years, minimum, minimum, minimum. Just buy recession proof. I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna I wasn't like, around then. <laughs> yeah, but no, for a kid at 17, you gotta look at his habits and then the exposure. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't look at raising my kids to be me or 
experience the things that I experienced. Mm -hmm. They got to have their own experience. Riley got her whole own experience. Yeah. She that's not going to have Obviously. your experience. Mm -hmm. Her experience in life is totally different. It's the one that you are able to provide. If her credit gets messed up, asshole is your fault. Right. Because yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, that's it's what your I'm saying. So you monitor it as a parent. If you know that's not her strong point, you monitor and make sure my my, my youngest stay straight. I, I'll put systems in place to make yeah. sure you stay straight because I can see your weaknesses like I can see your strengths. Yeah. And that's the thing that we didn't have. We didn't have nobody guiding us. So we run it in the walls and we running into we figuring it out. We we ending up homeless and because nobody was guiding us and putting a hand over us like yeah. they should. This is you. We bring these kids into this earth. And on, on this world, it's our responsibility to guide them. Yeah. It's I'm guiding until I'm gone. My mm. kids is never done. My job is, I look, my mom still call me and I was, she'd be like, you all right? Turk dad, a, a, a call her and be like, you know, I just, I'll make sure you're okay. Do you need anything to, can I do this? Man, the, the, my dog would be over their house for, for at her dad house for a week, two weeks. He'd be like, I thought it was my dog. <laughs> the, you never stop being a parent. No. Like it yeah. never, it never stops. So, when I, I look get at that, but I, when they leave and be outside, I'm not going to the most here's valuable person to me right now. But, but here, yeah. like, the way you're going to do credit, bro, is like, I mean, you got credit cards. Like, people with money, they just put their kids on their credit card and they monitor what they're doing anyway. I mean, I they gonna pick my credit. I'm just, she ain't going to mess it up, though. What I'm basically trying to say <laughs> is that. <laughs> you going to be able to say, this card has a, a spending limit of $1,200. You, know I mean? you know what I mean? Successful parents and they, a lot of them got kids that's jacked up, bro. Mm -hmm. And I ain't referring to my daughter now. I ain't saying that's going to be her. But I'm saying, do you know how many... Mm -hmm. But that's because they don't, we're in a place, we're in a self-development place and we have friends and peers to look at. I mean, some people are just naturally screw ups. Some people, you just can't help it. Mm -hmm. It's just like, yo, you just a fuck up. It's nothing I can do. Yeah, a lot of people Genetic, bad money genetics is a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Like, excuse my language, but genetics is one thing. Sometimes it's, it's experiences. Sometimes it's, it's a lack of drive. Some people just aren't, and, and we will say they're a, a screw up based off of the parents' perception. Yeah. If if some it's people out there right now with an alcohol addiction and a drug addiction that feel like they are absolutely fine mm -hmm. and they enjoy their life, but you'll look at them and say, "You don't got a business. You ain't making your business suck. You ain't making a hundred thousand dollars a month." Yeah. No, it's their perception of what they're willing to deal with. Mm -hmm. If they're okay with staying in a two in a, a two two bedroom one bath and in 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 peeing in jugs, then that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because it's oh, it's oh, if they're willing to accept it, that does not mean they're a screw up. Mm -hmm. That means that they're willing to live this life. My, I, and I'm not throwing a shot. It's just it came out because my man, where he's at now, is what he like. is uh, is accustomed to. <laughs> like I may have went through that, but I didn't stay there. Mm -hmm. Some people will accept things and just be okay with it. I went yeah. from peeing in drugs to nine bathrooms now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, dang. God is good, bro. Yeah, <laughs> nine bathrooms. Golly, you got nine bathrooms. Nine bathrooms, bro. You disrespectful. God is good. Bro, do you, when the last time you been upstairs in your house? Mm -hmm, about two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> two months ago. Yeah, all the bedrooms have. You already got a seven, three, eight bedroom three. house. His mm -hmm. dog living better than a lot of people out here, man. It's, it's, it's a, dog living crazy. You got a virtual reality booth and everything. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Not a fact. I was at when I was in Disney. I'm in Disney. Um, in Florida with my kids and we in like this forest room and I'm on live. They was like, yo, why, why 500 in Alex, uh, dog, dog room. room? I said, yo, <laughs> you okay? <laughs> I said, yo. Yeah. Cause this dog room is decked out. Yeah, like a is. cabin. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying, it's like a whole, yeah. it's a, a whole park. joint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man. Nah, but man, nah, we definitely had a good conversation, man, sitting here talking with y'all. I think that they get to see us play a little bit. <laughs> yeah. We ain't really talk, no business. Nah, really? yo, congrats, y'all welcome. I be tired of talking about that shit all the time. Yeah, we Thanks. say we saved the audience. Neo didn't give y'all a pitch or a call to action, man. You, you welcome. Thank you, <laughs> y'all welcome. Oh, he, no, he dropped it in his video. We just not seeing it. He, yeah, it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be nah, it's gonna be, yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna drop some ads in the video. <laughs> but no, we really, I think, what y'all think about that kind? Cause David, I'm like, bro, we need to always start business, but, but this allows people to get the notes. What y'all think? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, cause they always, they, they see us play. But do you now. think they're gonna listen to the whole thing, not knowing that oh, we didn't talk about? Bit. I feel like we talk more of life. But they just found out now that we didn't talk business. So thank y'all so, for watching. Yeah, <laughs> you got this right, far. Right. Yeah, yeah. You got this far. You know, you. But you know, these backstories though, kind of, you know, explain, what makes the man? It explains yeah. like you know what, what I'm saying. Makes like, the man. What we've been through to get to where we at right yeah. now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a fact. 
these stories is just important. It's just as important. You yeah, know that's saying? real. Yeah. You know well, at least as we take it out, everybody lead the people with one piece of advice they could use in the season. Because this season different than last year, I believe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I'll, I'll just say, got, yeah, no, go ahead. I'll just start off with just, you know, kind of what we started off talking about, like just using that pain, you know, as the motivation. You know what I mean? It's so easy for, it would, it would have been easy for me to just use the fact that I didn't meet my father um, and, and, the, and the pain that I went through for that is an excuse of why I didn't make it. It was it was something easy that I could use as a, as a crutch, but instead I turned it around. And, you know, even though I feel like the energy might not have been as positive, me wanting to prove that, yo, you're going to regret not meeting me, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I used that strategy and it worked. But now I've been able to forgive and move on, man. So, again, just turn that pain um, into motivation and uh, it has something to show for that pain. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with that. I'll just say like, you know, where you are is not who you are. You know what I mean? Like some people might be mm. in some, some tough That's spots good. right now. And it's like- you Always got some stuff with you, man. Yeah, you know. You where you are is not who you are. Like, Thank you. you know what I'm, saying? <clears throat> I'm sure he'll tell you. But it's not- You boop again? Do it again? No. Do it again. <laughs> Please don't. Because <laughs> he said you <laughs> That's why I ain't going to do it. Nah, but it's like, but but I think that goes both ways. It's like, you know, you know where you are is not who you are. So it's like, if you're on the top, then you got to stay humble. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, on the other side, it's like, you know, if you're not where you want to be, that's not who you are. So you got to stay hungry. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, use this time to motivate you, inspire you, and, uh, you know, just be be vigilant, be smart, and uh, and go get it. I guess mine would be just stay at it, right? Right now in this season, I feel like this isn't a time to really take your foot off the gas. You mm -hmm. should put your foot on the gas. Mm -hmm. Yep. And right now I feel like it's double down season. Whatever you did last year, you need to double that up. Like you're yeah. going to have to put a little bit more effort in mm -hmm. this year. So that's what I'm saying. Give it everything you got. <clears throat> For me, I would tell um, is don't ever be humble. Well, uh, that's what Jesus said. So stay, stay. I'll let y'all talk about it. <laughs> 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 I killed you. You killed you. You killed you. He got it when I was talking here. I said, somebody just told me. No, yeah, but no. What what I when I said is that look at the definition of humble. But your approach to business and life right now um, is everybody where we come from. A lot of times we start off at the bottom, or we start off somewhere and we want to go up. And when you want to go up, you got to plan as far up as, as possible. Don't start off thinking that, hey, I'm just going to start off as um, a party promoter, right? Like, I'm not just going to be a promoter. I'm going to be an owner of X, Y, and Z. I'm going, I know that there's more to life. And that's one thing I tell people in business right now is we don't lose in business. We lose in planning of business. We did not plan to be top tier. We didn't plan to be a part of Fortune 500. My name is Him 500 because I wanted to be at Fortune 500 level. So when I plan now, I don't look to make $100,000. I'm trying to say, how do I make $100 million? What's the business infrastructure like to make $100 million? And once I can make $100 million, I then can plan for a billion. But I'm not staying, okay, yeah, you made $10 million. Well, my goal is not to make $10 million anymore. My goal is to make $100 million. So I'm planning my business structures need to be that way. My goals need to be that way. So when I work for something, as I make money, allocate your money towards the next goal that's bigger than what your vision currently is. So when I say is yeah. don't be humble is not in a way of the, I don't even know how they put a negativeness on or making being humble cool. I don't agree with it. I don't even like the word. Um, so when I say is go all out, yeah, y'all play that clip in whatever he said, but <laughs> screw all that humble shit. You gotta be a dog and, and you gotta be a savage and you gotta believe in yourself because the world don't believe in you. Ain't nobody gonna believe in you. Ain't nobody gonna have your back. Ain't nobody gonna work for you. You gotta put that work in. You gotta do it every day. You gotta be competitive. You gotta have grit and ain't nothing nice about that shit. It ain't nothing nice about getting rich and ain't nothing nice about being broke. So I'm gonna tell you this, don't be nice, be hungry and don't be humble because the world want us do that to you. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I if you're watching this podcast, man, and if you, uh, you know, you work in a warehouse, you know, nothing wrong with that. Um, but if you work in a warehouse, that's not where you want to be. If you're eating rice and gravy, if you're sleeping on the floor, if you're pissing in jugs, you know, you got to understand that your current situation ain't your final destination. You know what I mean? You can get up out of that, but you got to work at it. You know what I mean? Nobody's going to come, like Marcus said, nobody's going to come and just get you up out of that. You got to get your own ass up off the floor, you know, you got to get your own thoughts outside of your head and execute. I think one thing about everybody on this couch, man, we execute. 
You know what I mean? Um, right. I had a failing business last year. You know what I mean? And I turned that business into my main source of money. You know what I mean? I pivot and I just made my mind up. I was going to do it. You know, it mm -hmm. has to work or it has to work. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit here and look like I got the litest gym. Nah, my, my gym need to it, it needed to look that way on paper, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So I just put all my focus. I was laser being focused on the on on what I had to do, and I executed. You know what I'm saying? And literally, in a matter of 90 days, I done quadrupled my income for that one business just because I was intentional about it. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. So if you want to be if you want to be out of that situation, man, be intentional about getting up out that warehouse. Be intentional about getting up out that floor. Like call to action. Like do something. That's all I got. Yes, yeah. sir. Powerful. And guys, that's the episode. Hope y'all enjoy it. Let us know in the comments if y'all want to see more uh, episodes like this. Let's get it.